What you're seeing here was my 1951 Chevrolet Fleetline Deluxe. I purchased this car in 2007 with the dream of making it into my first custom. At that time, I belonged to a car club called the Clutch Poppers, where we would share the experience of building cars together. It was in these club meetings that I gained a lot of the experience that I have now in metal shaping. One of the first major projects that we performed on my fleet line was to extend the quarter panels two and a half inches on top and five inches on the bottom to give it an extended look, much like a Mercury. There was quite a lot of work to do to get the quarter panels right. With the club rotation, it was close to a year by the time we had the bodywork completed. We sprayed primer on the car in time for the 2012 World of Wheels, which takes place in February. The fleet line took home a second place prize, which was outstanding since there was no interior in the car at that time. That summer, there was a ton of cruising and a whole lot of picnics and barbecues with the car club. This is where things really got crazy. I decided that the engine that was in it really wasn't enough power for what I was trying to do. So we put together an engine that was completely smoothed out, had a big cam put into it, had a whole bunch of work like gapless rings, and we put it into the car. Very shortly after this, the car was stripped down and a bunch of patch panels and some metal finishing were done on the body as well as some fender skirts that had a lip on them. The splash pan was also redone and transferred into a plastic pattern and bead rolled out so that it matched the length of the quarters when they were redone. At this point, a T5 transmission and an S10 4x4 rear end with four link suspension were installed. Next on the list was some jewelry, some two inch exhaust pipe, some ripple pipe from Moon Eyes was ordered, as well as some cheap bends that have the little ripples in them from a regular uh, tire shop. They were then put into a jig and welded together so that each side matched. The original bumperettes were coped out for taillight assemblies and the original bumperette overrider bar for the license plate holder was narrowed three inches so that it made a bumperette taillight assembly. Now the fleet line was final primed, sanded out, and painted by Chad Bailey. After all the chroming was completed, the car was then assembled for the big reveal at the 2015 World of Wheels. At the 2015 World of Wheels, it won first place in its class and it also won the street achievement for best overall custom at the show. Very shortly after the show, I was contacted by Trent Sherrill of Traditional Rod and Culture magazine. He flew up from the US and we went to Spray Lakes, Alberta and took many beautiful pictures of the car. <laughs> That winter, Traditional Rod and Culture released a full feature on my car in their magazine. And since our winters are so long and drivability was becoming an issue, I installed a fast EFI kit on it with a Clifford four barrel intake to adapt it. And to fuel the whole process, I installed a Tanks Inc. tank with a drop-in fuel pump.
Next up, the two big upgrades on the car were disc brakes onto the stock suspension, as well as a Cavalier rack installed onto the stock suspension. This also included a power steering pump install with an alternator relocation. Later on, I was then contacted by Alex Gambino of Gambino Customs. We made the trip all the way from Calgary down to San Jose, got to go to a show at Top Notch Customs, enjoy the show at Gambino Customs, and we also won Best Mild Custom at the show. Very shortly after coming back from the show in San Jose, the car went up for sale and is now gone. Sad to see it go, but I'm so glad to move on to what's next. I want to end this video by saying thank you to everyone who over the years helped me, mentored me, and shaped me into the person that I am today. Please subscribe to my channel, hit the like button, and make sure you leave a comment below.